Jeff Hinton is interviewed by Karen Howe for the Technology Review. Karen Howe has published an interview with Jeff Hinton on MIT's Technology Review website. I would describe Howe's interview as a teaser. She jumps back into the familiar narratives, deep learning, modern neural network, as compared to the structure of the human mind, the notion of understanding, in quotes, as we use it with regards to the human cognitive process, and the capabilities of deep learning. Finally, some thoughts on where we are headed. Here are a couple of standouts as I read them. Hinton thinks we are still a long way off from building deep learning systems comparable to the operation of the human mind. I get this from the following quote. But we also need a massive increase in scale. The human brain has about 100 trillion parameters, or synapses, what we now call a really big model, like GPT-3, has 175 billion. It's a thousand times smaller than the brain. GPT-3 can now generate pretty plausible looking text, and it's still tiny compared to the brain. Hinton calls the challenge of bridging this gap a, quote, need for a massive increase in scale, end of quote. quote. Given today's reality of the massive distributed data centers powering IAAS offers and the programming methods built for them, I'm thinking about GPUs, MapReduce, Hadoop and their progeny in the serial computing vein, massively parallel computing systems performing the same task um, with thousands upon thousands of iterations. I don't see us achieving um, uh, Hinton's massive increase in scale for a long time. Hinton sounds pleased with the performance of GPT-3. Quote, for things like GPT-3, which generates this wonderful text, it's clear it must understand a lot to generate that text, but it's not quite clear how much it understands. So it's interesting that Howe doesn't pick him up on that point, that he's using the term understand uh, in two different contexts. Um, with the end result, really, that in a way it's a zero-sum game, and there's no sense of what Hinton really means by understanding. Uh, but he isn't sure how much, quote, how much it understands, end of quote. Hinton sounds kind, kind of, Hinton sounds um, kind of compared to what looks like a conclusion across at least the academic community, GPT-3 remains prone to the same malicious manipulation as its prede uh, predecessors. Um, and it, there has been some text recently in the last slide just showed it, uh, the GPT-3 has also been manipulated for uh, biased, um, abusive comment comments uh, and content online. Safe to say what Hinton finds, quote, wonderful, end of quote, the rest of us discerning people may very well find repulsive or even worse. Therefore, it's likely Hinton is understating what amounts to the same stubborn lack of understanding on the part of today's deep learning software characteristic of its predecessors and other approaches to quote, AI, end of quote. It's important to state here, computers have no sense whatsoever um, uh, from, the, um, from um, my experience of what I've read of understanding in the human form whatsoever. And, and um, projects to make computers uh, capable of human level understanding seem to be futile. This has been going on not just for the last two to three to five years, it's actually been going on since the birth of neural networks uh, back in the early 80s. So we've been at this thing now for going on to, um, to 20 years without a breakthrough. And it's highly unlikely that there will be a breakthrough in, uh, based upon current approaches. Hinton turns a spotlight onto the work of Ashish Vaswani and colleagues. He clearly thinks Vaswani has pushed the ball forward for deep learning and specifically as it is applied to the burning need to automate human communication via languages. NLP, NLU, IVR, etc. And here's the quote. For example, in 2017, Ashish Vaswani et al. introduced transformers which derive really good vectors representing word meanings 
It was a conceptual breakthrough. It, it's now used in almost all the very best natural language processing. We're going to need a bunch more breakthroughs like that. End of quote. In the abstract to his 2017 paper, quote, attention is all you need, end of quote, Ashish Vaswani and his team present their breakthrough using the notion of, quote, self-attention, end of quote, to substantially streamline the operation of automation solutions like those built for human com communication by languages uh, by getting rid of, re quote, recurrent or convolutional neural networks altogether, end of quote. The title of Vaswani's paper looks to me like a play on the title of a Beatles song, quote, Love is All You Need, end of quote. A fitting choice given the combination of big benefits, including much faster processing speed and lower demand on hardware GPUs, Vaswani's, Vashwani's transformer promises to deliver. But, quote, understanding, end of quote, is not one of these benefits. Unfortunately, Howe did not ask Hinton what he thinks of the work of Ilya Sukolutsky. Howe wrote a story in Sukolutsky in his work to lower his work to uh, lower the data appetite of deep learning programmers programs earlier this year. My name is Ira Michael Blonder. I'm the CEO and founder of IMB Enterprises Inc. I'm also interested in developments in the AI, area of AI software and the businesses built up to promulgate them. I touch on these interests via my Twitter page, at Mike the Bebop, from time to time. I do also tweet on other topics. If you have a topic of interest, I'm always happy to speak over a short free telephone call, so please don't hesitate to ring me up at 631-673-2929. Please also visit uh, my, uh, our company's uh, webpage, https um, dot imbenterprises.com. Uh, you'll find a blog there with over 2,000 posts. Uh, the blog has been working uh, since 2011. I also have, uh, an, I think, in excess of 100 uh, posts on Medium. I no longer publish on Medium. Um, and um, uh, also visit my personal Twitter page at Mike the Bebop and speak with you next week.